Good morning. Uh, Happy New Year, as we're just a few hours away from another new year. If you are pulling this up on Sunday morning, uh, you'll see that we have um, a, a service or a sermon that is centered around a New Year's Eve uh, holiday that mentions change, change in the new year. That's what we're going to talk about and how we we look at that change, what what has changed, what isn't changing, what needs to change, things like that will be the center of my message today. But let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come into the presence of God, create us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we've disobeyed him, deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are now his dear child. May God grant you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of him who blesses us with new life, new strength, new happiness, each new year, dear fellow children of God. Would you do it all over again? If you had the chance, would you repeat the past year? Now, granted, you can all recall how God continued to bless you in 2023. But what about all the things that happened to change your life? Some that you may not have expected. Maybe it was a change in employment that you didn't see coming. Did you move in the past year? That requires an adjustment. Perhaps health issues altered your life. The loss of a loved one always throws us for a loop as we adjust to the change of living without them. And whether we saw it coming or not, I imagine each of us uh, was impacted to some extent by change this past year. Well, we don't have to relive 2023, but we do have to pre prepare for 2024. In a few hours, we'll find ourselves in yet another new year. Uh, it depends on when you're watching this. Uh, the next 365 days are bound to bring changes into our lives because change is inevitable. So today you're in the right place to prepare for it. Let's see what God's word has to say about change in the new year. I want to talk to you today about what has changed, what needs to change, and what never changes. The greatest and most necessary change has already taken place in each of us as Christians. In verse 23 of our text, the apostle Peter, as we're in, we're in uh First Peter chapter 1 this morning, Peter speaks about this life-altering change. Go to verse 23 of First Peter chapter 1. You have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. So our first birth left us in rough shape. In the Psalms, David said, surely I was sinful at birth, even sinful from the time my mother conceived me. And contrary to, to a popular opinion, we weren't all that sweet and innocent when we were born. We may have looked that way a little bit on the outside, but we were rotten to the core on the inside, filled with sin passed down to us from our parents. We were born, as Peter says, first of perishable seed, meaning that we would die because of sin. And with that being the case, we were facing the dreaded sentence of life imprisonment in the dungeons of hell. Someone had to change things, and God did just that. He stepped in with a miracle, a miracle washing known as baptism. And with this simple act, Paul tells us that the Lord, as he says, as Paul says to Titus, saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And what stands behind this washing? Well, that's what empowers it, as Peter says, the living and enduring word of God. The word is what brings about a change in each of us, transforming us from sinners to saints, from slaves of the devil to servants of our Lord, from God's enemies to God's children. And that change enacted by God's imperishable word makes all the difference in the world for us. 
Think of where we'd be if we hadn't been reborn. By nature, we'd still be lost and condemned creatures. We'd still be burdened with the stain of sin and the chain of guilt. We'd be living a life of misery without God here on this earth, facing an eternity of torment without him in hell. But look at us now. Now we have peace with God, knowing that our sins are covered in Christ's righteousness, along with the guilt that goes with them. Now we have nothing standing in our way as we look forward to eternity. For we know that our spot in heaven has been reserved by our Savior. Life's questions no longer leave us hanging in doubt and despair, because we know where we're going, and we know how we're going to get there. We're no longer in the dark, and we're no longer alone, all because we're born again through the imperishable, living, and adoring Word of God. So, first of all, now we know what has changed for us, our status before God. And it's that change that causes a chain reaction in each of us, because as children of God, now we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to make changes in our lives. Let's take a look at what now needs to change in the new year and beyond. Going back to verse 22. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. Oh, don't be misled by those words that you've purified yourselves by obeying the truth. It's just another way of describing how faith works. It's that miracle of faith that the Holy Spirit brings about that enables us then to obey the truth, which means to accept what God has done for us in Christ. And this is where we find our forgiveness or our purification. And the end result, Peter says, is sincere love for your brothers. Now, if God's love, we have it so evident uh, in our lives, well, well, we are then called upon to reflect that love to others. Jesus gives us these words concerning love in John chapter 13. He says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I've loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You might say Christian love is like our spiritual ID card. It proves our membership in God's kingdom. And Christian love is, is a fruit of our faith. But because we're still sinners, it's something that we have to work at. Such love, brother, isn't going to come naturally because our sinful tendency is to adopt the world's philosophy and exercise self-love first. That's why Paul in Philippians says each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. Yes, having love for others is a fruit of Christian faith, but there's always going to be room for improvement. That's the point Paul was sharing when he wrote a letter to the Thessalonians. Here's the words that he wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now about brotherly love, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia, yet we urge you, brothers, to do so more and more. In other words, even though you're exercising this fruit as you're changing in your lives, keep at it, keep working at it, keep growing in your love for others. You and I, this is an area in which we can all make changes. Setting aside our own needs and concerns to truly care for those around us, that's what Peter means when he tells us to love one another deeply from the heart. How do you know if you love someone that way, if you have that kind of love? Well, I, I want to simplify it for you. A love that comes deep from the heart will always be concerned about another's spiritual welfare. In other words, if you truly love someone, you'll care about where that, where that person is going to spend eternity. To sit idly by, to do nothing, huh. how can that be love? How can we claim to love someone if we ignore the inevitable? That without a Savior, they'll be spending an eternity in hell. Allow me to lead you in a short prayer. Please bow your heads. Dear Lord, forgive us for all the missed opportunities in the past year when we failed to share your word and show love for others. Amen. We all must humbly admit our shortcomings in this area, but I've got some good news for you. In 2024, there are going to be more opportunities for you to share with people the reason for the hope that you have. And I'm sure God has someone in mind for you, someone who needs what you have, someone who needs to hear about Jesus. But our love, brothers, needs to change, for it needs to improve. 
pray that God helps each of us make the necessary changes so we can do better at loving others deeply from the heart. So we've been changed from sinners to saint, and we know we need to change by growing in our love for others. One last thing I want to talk about yet, what never changes, no matter what the year may be, and that's the word of our Lord. Paul makes this point, the last two verses, verses 24 and 25 of 1 Peter 1. All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. You know, you and I, eventually, we're going to fade away. We're going to leave this earth, perhaps in the new year. And yet, the unknown day of our death should not strike fear in our hearts, because the word of the Lord stands forever. And that's why I find it extremely comforting to know that the same God I read about in the Old and New Testaments is the same God watching over me today. The same God who made so many promises of a Messiah to those Old Testament believers, the same God who kept those promises by sending Jesus into this world, that same God has made promises to you and me today. He's promised to be with us always, to never give us more than we can handle, to work all things out for our good, to never leave us or forsake us, and to someday send Jesus back to take us home. So no matter what changes from year to year in this ever-changing world, the one thing that never changes is the imperishable, living, and enduring Word of God. Well, if it's still 2023 for you as you're reading this, you know that it won't be long before you have to change the calendar and welcome in another new year. And as we do so, we might feel just a little bit apprehensive because with all our planning, with all our preparations, we still don't know for sure what the new year will bring. We know that change will come, but we don't know if those changes will necessarily be for the better. But my friends, still as Christians, we have no reason to worry. We have no reason to fear the unknown. We can face whatever comes our way knowing that Jesus will always be at our side. The saying is so very true. We may not know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. Our all-loving, never-changing Lord and Savior, who is the same yesterday and today and forever. He has already been through 2024 for us. And he assures us that his children of God will be just fine. Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, eternal Father and giver of every good gift, we commit to your mercy the year now ending. Forgive us our sins where we have done wrong. Work in our hearts true repentance and faith and redeem us from all the evil of this past year. Lord God, you have shown us hard times and exposed many idols among us. Yet if we are faithless, Christ remains faithful and will not deny himself. Help our unbelief that we may know nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. Lord God, you've preserved our congregation in the faith for another year. We give you thanks for your blessing and guidance. Grant that by your grace we may continue to serve you in this place. Lord God, preserve our preaching and teaching so it is faithful to your word. Ensure that your holy sacraments are administered according to your commands and promises. Help us reach out in love to our community. Lord God, we commend to you to your blessing and love the times yet to come. Until you bring this life on earth to an end, guard and guide us by your strong arm. Lead us according to your word and renew us clean hearts that trust you and show love toward our neighbors. But God, hear our prayers for our nation and its government. Preserve our republic, we implore you. Give health and competence to those who serve in positions of authority. Protect those who serve in the line of danger for our safety and give peace in our time. Lord God, we give thanks to you for the many mercies and gifts you've showered upon us this past year. You have given life, healed, and comforted. You have provided for our spiritual and physical well-being. You take care of us every day. And all this you have done, not because of any merit in us, but only out of your love for us in Jesus, our Savior. Comfort and sustain your children who suffer from sickness, need, or affliction. Lord God, you neither slumber nor sleep as you keep watch over us while our eyes ever grow heavy with sleep. Have compassion on our weak flesh and pour out your spirit upon us that in faith we would stay dressed for action 
with our lamps burning until our master comes. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, abide among us in this new year with your Holy Spirit, that we may always trust in the saving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we now join together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God's blessings to you as we close out one year and begin another, knowing that the same God who has been, us, been with us our entire lives, the same God, the God of scriptures, is going to be with us in the new year as well. And may that assurance give you hope and comfort and joy in 2024 and beyond. Blessings on your new year, and we'll bring you God's word again in the future. Take care.